All right, so now we're going to design or just do a quick little example problem on designing of a transmission shaft with power associated with it. And I've got, you know, I'm thinking of my old school green Dodge Neon, right, which I drove my kids around, manual gear shift. Oh, man, that was a fun car. Old 1995 I used to call it Leon, the green Dodge Neon for my kids. Tell little bedtime stories with it about Leon trying to drive around, pick everyone up, drop everyone off. <laughs> uh, memories. That Dodge Neon will deliver about 130, 132 horsepower at about 6,000 RPMs. And if I have a material with an allowable stress, let's say steel, and we have some safety factor associated with it, with an allowable shear stress of 10 KSI, and already I know that I have an outer diameter of three inches, and I'm designing a hollow circular shaft. So here, if this is the cross section of my shaft, and here, this outer diameter is three inches. And what I want to do is I want to find the thickness of this shaft so that I can choose the appropriate one. All right. So I can go on eBay and buy it. <laughs> All right. So here, so here, let's see, I'm given power and a, a frequency. And so the first thing I want to do associated with this is determine the internal torque or the torque requirement, the internal, determine internal torsion. And this is usually just a unit conversion associated with this. So if you recall that formula power was equal to T times omega, what I'm given here is that the frequency is equal to 6,000 R revolutions per minute. And I wanna convert this frequency into an angular velocity, which means I gotta put it in units of radians per second. So omega is equal to 6,000 revolutions per minute. I have 60 seconds for every minute and I have two pi radians per revolution. And I'm a big fan of not making silly mistakes with units and I like writing this, you know, the, the units out and the conversion ratios out so that I can just go ahead later and cross off, boom, minutes, see ya, revolutions, see ya. And I'm left with, you know, 6,000 divided by 60 times two pi, which is 200 pi radians per second. And that is my angular velocity. And if I want to calculate my torque, my internal torsion, this is just going to be power divided by omega. And the power that I have is 132 horsepower divided by 200 pi radians per second. And I've got to convert this horsepower to pound feet second, which is this ratio. No one expects you to memorize conversion factors, 550 pound feet per second for every horsepower, per horsepower. And here I will know that the horsepower will cancel out here and the seconds will cancel out here. And when I complete this calculation, I will get 115.5 pound feet. Technically divided by radians, but radians is just a dimensionless unit, okay? So the internal torque that my cross, my shaft is experiencing is 115.5 pound feet. And I would say this is the hard part. Now that we want to design or determine the geometry of, of something, we want something, we want the geometry associated with the shaft. The next thing I'm gonna do is apply the basic design relationship. And the BDR, this basic design relationship is only either str normal stress or shear stress and torque causes shear stress. So this is gonna be tau applied less than or equal to tau allowed. Basic design relationship is useful to use whenever you're trying to figure out a size of the geometry or a maximum load that can be applied to the structure. All right, this is a good way. This basic design relationship is a good place to start. Here, this is going to be this T times rho over J less than or equal to tau allow. And I know that this rho, if I go back and I look at my cross section, I know my maximum shear stress occurs at the outer radius here, which is 1.5 inches. This is 1.5 inches. This torque is 115.5 pound feet. And this allowable stress is 10 
KSI. All right, and here for a hollow circular shaft, my polar moment of inertia is pi over two outer radius to the fourth minus the inner radius to the fourth. So if I go and I, and I rewrite this over here, so let me rewrite this, boom. Right here, I would have 115.5 pound feet. I'm gonna do a unit conversion so I have inches and everything. So here are 12 inches per foot times 1.5 inches divided by pi over two, the outer radius, which is 1.5 inches to the fourth minus the inner radius to the fourth. And this is less than or equal to 10 kip per inch squared, which is the same thing as 10,000 pounds per inch squared. And now if I look at this equation, this basic design relationship, I have one equation, one unknown right here. And if I work the algebra to solve this, let's see here, if I work out some algebra, fourth, and then if I solve for this inner radius first, and something that always seems, you know, this relationship it gets a little funky here. But here, you know, I've got this negative and negative. And if I multiply through by a negative, then I can just say this is 4.9302 inches to the fourth, ri, inner radius to the fourth. And something that always tricks a few people is that when you multiply by a negative, you've got to reverse the inequality. So this should be like this. And when I work this out, I will get that the inner radius, ri, should be less than or equal to one point four nine zero inches like this and it makes sense right because if my inner radius is bigger than 1.49 inches or if the requirement is that it has to be greater than 1.49 inches i could end up making this thing really thin and that and if i have a really thin torsional shaft i i'm probably going to fail faster because you know i don't have as much material and so if you look at and, and i'm going to have smaller polar moment of inertia higher stress more likely to fail so it makes sense that if i have if i have my inner radius be less than or equal to 1.49 inches my wall will be thicker and the relationship between the inner radius and the wall thickness is that t is equal to r0 minus ri. And this thickness, we want to be greater than or equal to this difference. So this is gonna be t greater than or equal to uh, 0 0.01 inches. So this is gonna be our design requirement, that we choose a hollow circular shaft that has at least 0 0.01 inch wall thickness, right? So as long as you meet this requirement, you should be able to deliver the 132 horsepower at 6,000 RPMs. All right, hopefully that was a useful example problem. Take it easy, see ya.